Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you see this uh, outstanding award, achievement, lifetime achievement award, it's the All Bathtub Hall of Fame, uh, and you hear no no music and no special sound effects, you know this is the post-tech edition of the bathtub, but we're, we're moving into our post-tech decade. It's to be distinguished from our tech decade and our pre-tech decade. The post-tech decade is just like the pre-tech decade, only it comes later. That's not easy to say. And there's Dodo, totally non-tech. No tech. We took all the pixels out, out of Dodo and took them all out of me. And we just put them all into this outstanding statue before we fired the Pismo Beach prop department and sent them home crying to their mothers. Or their mother. They had the same mother. I haven't figured that out. And this is our award. And it's a special award, which we only give to our favorite writers who who, who have given more, more bathtub pleasure than any other writers that I know of in my experience. And, and depending on how I feel that day. And the one we're going to do this, this week is, is W. Somerset Mom. We're putting him in the Bathtub Hall of Fame. He, should have, he was basically in the bathtub when we got there. He was already in the Bathtub Hall of Fame, even before I knew who the hell he was. Um, I'm just going to say a few words about him um, because I, I, I sort of read most of his books when I was like 16 or 17. And one of the things I like about Mom, he's one of those writers like Steinbeck, that is the one that always comes to mind, that you can give to someone of any age. And if they haven't read him, they will probably enjoy him. I, I can't think of any age kid who would, 12, 13, 14. I must have read The Razor's Edge, which was the first book I ever read of, of Somerset Mom, when I was 14 or 15. You know, and I was mainly reading like junky science fiction books and horror and uh, detective novels. And it was one of the literary novels I just put, I couldn't put it down. I just loved, I loved everything about that book. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. And this week, what I, I read was the, the Magician, one I'd never read before. I was like to go back and read something I haven't read by these writers I loved. One of the things that makes a bathtub, all bathtub Hall of Fame writers, really important is it's not, you know, there's certain writers who like wrote, you know, William Gaddis wrote the uh, JR. People are going to get pissed off by this, but I'm going to say this. JR is a great, hilarious novel. Parts of the recognitions are brilliant, but he, he really didn't spend a lifetime writing great novels that you want to take into the bathtub. And many of his late novels are pretty boring. Somerset Mom, I don't think he ever wrote a book that wasn't fun in the bathtub. And this, I think, is probably one of the, it, in some ways, a really interesting novel and kind of fun. Um, it may not be his best novel, but it's far from his best novel. But it's still a great read. It's still a terrific read. And I think that's true of all our Bathtub Hall of Famers is they almost their books were all really good. Um, I'll, I'll say this is two, it was 1908. I just had to double check this. Let me just double check this because you know how, how we do our research here at the... We do our research here at the Bathtub is, is we don't do it at all. That's basically how we do it here. At 2008, so it was the novel he wrote. He wrote four or five novels which were fairly successful. Um, I haven't read most of Lisa of Lambeth. I never read that. I did read Mrs. Craddock once on on a not too long ago on a plane trip, and and enjoyed it. They were kind of naturalistic novels about love. Those sort of naturalistic novels where the woman wants to have sex with some good looking guy that works on the farm, and it kind of ruins her marriage to some stuffed up old shirt. And there's there's some of that in his early books, and most of his books has a kind of a, sen a sensuality in some of his characters that they can't. They can't realize what's considered what's a pretty boring middle class British existence. Um, the 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 magician is the only book I ever read of of Mom, which is actually a supernatural novel. So it was based it was based apparently on Aleister Crowley. This is a non tech edition, no no booze. It's always before five o'clock. We do these things in the, in the natural sunlight. So we don't have to bring in those big Klieg lights we used to bring in for the, the nighttime edition of the bathtub. Um, and it's, uh, what was, I don't remember what I was saying though. It, it's, it has a supernatural element to it. And in Aleister Crowley, it was based on Aleister Crowley. And there's this big kind of fat, corpulent, kind of corrupt, and yet sort of insidiously charming character who I guess mom used to meet and run into all the time. And he's the central kind of evil character. His name's Oliver Haddo. Oliver Haddo. And... It's about how he meets a, a guy who's a doctor. Mom was a doctor. He was, he was a physician. He went and got his degree as a medical doctor. He writes from the point of view of doctors very often and very well. And it's a, a man who, uh, I want to say he's, he's almost the East, in, he's, he's, he's East Indian background because of his name, and I forget it now. He has a young girl he's, he's in love with, a young woman who's supposed to be his ward. It's one of those things. You know, he's like the older guy. He's got the young woman named Margaret. 
and they're planning to get married, and somehow he insults this this magician. They call him the magician because he's supposed to. He says he has all these powerful abilities. And at first you think it's just kind of a realistic novel with a kind of Aleister Crowley nut floating around. But as it goes along, you start to hear these stories about this guy, uh, Oliver Haddo, that he actually does have mystical powers, and he's been doing these qu quite creepy. It is very much, it reminds me a little bit of uh, of many kind of horror writers of the of the early, early, early 20th century, um, but it's a little bit more drawing room horror, if, I, if that makes any sense. So it takes place in dinner parties and so forth. And this guy, Oliver Haddo, claims he's going to create life. He's going to create a homunculus. And I won't tell any more than that, but basically he hates this doctor because he insults him at a party, and he steals his wife from him, his girlfriend, Margaret. And I don't want to tell any more than that. It all, uh, Besides the horror novels, it reminds me a great deal of Oscar Wilde, uh, Dorian Gray, and of the guy we talked about a while back, uh, Wiesman, uh, Against Nature, because it has this element of Oliver Haddo, who likes to study art, and he's a very charming man, he's an absorbing man, and people like to be around him, and he likes to look at the evil, the evil pleasures of art. And I'll just say that it's, I found it a little long in places, it was, I was really surprised all the way through it, and if you haven't read Mom, and you like kind of, you know, Edge, ed, edge of horror, edge of supernatural fiction, uh, books. It, it's, it's. He really, he, mom never, never wrote a bad book. So I'm just going to say that about the magician, which I, I enjoyed. I mentioned the uh, Razor's Edge. I thought I'd just give you a quick tour of all my old mom books. And most, most of our bathing buddies have probably read a lot of Somerset Mom. They don't need me to, to tell you about him. But what I would say is that he's one of those writers. That for you know, if you're always looking for something to give to a 14, 15 year old niece or nephew, I mean, these are the types of books I always give niece and nephews, um, and uh, and they just always. I remember giving my son copies of Mom when he was thirteen or fourteen, and he 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 read a whole bunch of them, and I've always given them out to people. The Razor's Edge is one of the great ones. It's a late one. It's made into a mediocre Bill Murray movie. Don't let that harm it. But it's the the premise and the way that Mom tells that story, and the way he also tells. One of my all-time favorite novels, The Moon and Sixpence. Oh my God, look at these stacks of books here. It's the same narrative gimmick as The Moon and Sixpence, one of the greatest books about art I've ever read. I love this book. And it's about a guy who's like Somerset Mom. He goes around, and he's rarely in the company of the character who he's telling the story about. In this case, it's Larry Darrell, who turns his back on on civilization says hell with it it's all crap i want to go find i want to find meaning and so he travels around the world looking for a meaningful existence and it's what's interesting about it is how is this mom like character kind of touches base with people who know of larry and hear stories about larry and he kind of reports it and puts it in integrates it integrates it into his novel and it's a really effective way of telling a, a novel a novelistic story one that i don't think i could ever pull off the moon and sixpence is about the artist who's supposed to, he's a British artist. It's supposed to be based on Paul Gauguin. And it's basically a guy who decides in his life, he, just, he doesn't care about anybody but his art. And he treats his family, everybody like crap. And you still kind of admire him. <laughs> you still, and Mom sort of admires him, even though you really hear that. Uh, one, of the, one of the aspects of all of Mom books is he's very affectionate with monsters, whether it's Oliver Haddo or this kind of love um, one of the things that happens in The Magician is that this young girl actually s says she falls in love with Haddo. Not just that he's mesmerized her, and he probably has mesmerized her, but she actually feels that she loves him. And it's this horrific love. And Mom writes about that quite well. And in the case of loving art more than you love your family and so forth, he pulls that off really well. His most famous book, and most of you are already ahead of me on this one, and what, a book I read when I was 15... This is probably the first long book I ever read. Normally, I would never read a book that was 700 pages. Dodo, are you okay? Dodo's, Dodo's criticizing me. Um, of Human Bondage, another story about love that doesn't take you to necessarily the best places in life. And in this one, it's about this young guy, Philip. I want to say Philip Marlowe. But I can't Philip Mar yeah, Philip Carey. Philip Carey is an old... There was also a B-movie actor named Philip Carey. That's why I get him confused. Philip Carey. And uh, it's the premise of the book is this guy, young doctor who's got a club foot. I remember this book really vividly from, again, 50 years ago. 
at least 50, more than 50 years ago I read this book. Never reread it. I would like to reread it. He, he walks into a diner, as I recall, and he sees this waitress who's not really, he describes her really well. She's not really attractive. There's nothing really sexual about her or sexy about her. Um, she's not unattractive. And at the same time, he finds her fat. He's just absorbed. He's sexually interested in this girl. And he romanticizes her. And he spends basically the length of this book being treated like crap by her. Again, again, it's about loving people who aren't necessarily good for you and loving things that aren't good for you. Again, I would give this to a 15, 16-year-old. I think I certainly got it when I was 15 or 16. Um, then I have all these other books. I've never read any of his plays, but I have all his books in here. He wrote really good criticism. And near the end of his life, he wrote this, The World's great, Ten Greatest Novels. And I read all these when I was young. Um, his essays, you know, it got me to read some of these books, like David Copperfield and Madame Bovary. Um, that must have been the first times I really took him seriously was when I read those. Um, some of these I read, these are the old Bantam editions of Christmas Holiday. I'm pretty sure I, I read this and saw there's a movie based on it, as I recall, up at the villa, which was probably 40 or 50 years after I read it, was made into a movie with Sean Penn. Theater, don't know theater, but he, he worked in the theater. He was very successful. That's a cool, these are all cool old covers. That's I, The Narrow Corner, I've heard, is one of the good ones. And I don't remember, I don't think I read this one. But it's it's supposed to be pretty interesting. I have the collected stories, and I've only read a few of these over the years. He was considered one of the great short story writers. And I guess I just was really so much absorbed by his novels, I never really read too many of them. I have the whole set here someday, when the before the world comes to an end, like next week. Maybe I'll take some of these in the bathtub. The summing up. I remember reading this as a kid. He was really no nonsense about writing, and it really uh, it it, uh, it it is a book that was again. If you have a young kid, young kid in the family who's a writer, I think this book he writes to people in normal language, with great intelligence and 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 affection. I have heard that he was not a very nice man. I've never read a biography of Deborah Somerset Mom. I've heard stories about him. I used to know a guy. My mother knew a guy when I was a kid who claimed he knew he worked with Mom at the end of his life. Because mom lived pretty old, into, late into his life. And many, he was very old when he died, is what I was trying to say. And this guy claimed he knew mom, and he was supposed to be a bastard. That's what he said. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. Summing up, great book about being a writer for anybody who's a writer. Um, oh, I forgot this is one of my all-time... This is, I, this is a very short one. Cakes and Ale. I read that as a kid, and I reread that when I lived in London because I thought he did a great job with the way living in kind of crummy, squalid little bed sits in London, which I loved doing, by the way, when I was young or younger. And Cakes and Ale was about a young writer meeting, uh, getting involved with a woman who works in a, I think she works, she runs a pub, I want to say. Anyway, Cakes and Ale is a great read. And uh, I haven't read some of these others. The one that he, the most famous one he wrote that I haven't read is Ashenden. Many consider this one of the great early um, modern spy novels. It was supposed to be an influence on people like Green and, and Ian Fleming. Anyway, I have, it's on my it's on my stack. Anyway, just to say, um, he still holds up. He's still a great read. He's all bathtub all the way. All the all he's lo, he's no tech, no tech at all. He's all bathtub, pure pure bathtub, no pixels. It's all pure reading pleasure. And I recommend W. Somerset Mom, not to most of you who already know who he is, but maybe to pass on to younger people. I really do. It is one of those those Christmas books. I, I'm always trying to think of books to give younger kids and younger people. All right. And, and, and for any, any age, any adult, it, they're wonderful books. All right. Stay safe. Stay, stay bathing. Uh, take care. Bye.